Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, I've got a handy new tool for Touch Designer that I've been working on for a little while now. It is called Live Transcribe. This operator allows you to get real-time speech-to-text transcriptions and live captions inside of Touch Designer. It works both locally using real-time whisper models as well as via Assembly AI, which runs all in the cloud with an internet connection. I've also got Live Transcribe working on both Windows and Mac, though I've personally tested it much more on Windows. Let's go over the install process and get you all set up and working here. First, you'll need to make sure that you have the Live Transcribe operator, which you can grab from my Patreon page via the Dot .explorer tier or for a one-time purchase. Once you have that tox file, drag it into the network and you will see Live Transcribe loaded with the version name. But to get it set up, we will wanna to go to this parameter page here, the setup page, which contains the readme as well as the install parameters down here. Let's open the readme. You can see the prerequisites for Mac and for PC. For Mac, it's basically just Windows installed via Homebrew. And for Windows, we've got a couple more requirements. It doesn't truly need to be Python 3.11, but that is what I would definitely suggest and what is tested. We aren't directly importing this Python virtual environment within Touch Designer. The installation and a lot of the operation is handled via another operator called Python Manager. And that operator is a bit biased and prefers a Python version that matches Touch Designer. But you really don't need to worry about that. And if you want to take a closer look at the Python Manager, you can dive inside and that op also has a readme. But let's not think about that for now. Go back to the readme here and you'll see Python installed via Homebrew is the only prerequisite for Mac. And for using the local Whisper model on Windows, you will want to have CUDA installed with CUDA NN support, as well as Git for Windows. There is more information on the README in the installation section on CUDA NN files, as well as a link to the archive in the description of this video. Basically, you will need to unzip the folder that you download from here and copy all the folders and files included in that into your CUDA toolkit installation folder, which you can see here. But now that we have the prerequisites covered, we can go back to touch and Halfway down the setup page, like I said, we have a base folder and these install pulses. This will be the folder that contains the virtual Python environment for Live Transcribe. You may notice that I also have a base folder parameter in Stream Diffusion. These shouldn't be set as the same folder on disk because there are some conflicts in the Python libraries, and this will actually break Stream Diffusion if you install in that same folder. Using a separate folder between the op installations keeps things isolated and working specifically for that process. You can leave this parameter blank as the operator will ask you to pick a folder. Once you hit install, let's start with whisper first. So we'll hit install whisper and it will list what it is installing. We can select our CUDA version. I have CUDA 12.1 on this computer. And then we will select a folder that will hold the Python virtual environment. I'm just going to create a folder inside of the project folder that I am currently in. We'll call it live transcribe install and I think I spelled that right and select folder and once you do that you'll notice touch designer pauses for a second while it builds the environment and then you'll get a pop-up showing the pip install processes this will be a bit faster on Mac as it doesn't need to install torch and CUDA and NVIDIA specific stuff but you'll generally see a few command windows that pop up and showing what libraries installed because of the different platforms I've broken up the install so you kind of get you'll get another pop up here and like before it is blocking the thread in touch designer so i accidentally hit the readme x here and now touch designer thinks it's crashing but that's only because it's waiting for this once we get this install window we should pop back to touch and then i believe a second one will pop open but we'll see come on go faster go faster go faster 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 of course it's downloading the wrong numpy too all right now that popped open now we have another one we'll see we're getting the installation installing the build dependencies you'll notice that we're specifically uninstalling this numpy 2.1.1 which is a new version of numpy that seems to break everything and we have to explicitly set the most recent stable version. and there we go now you want to hit this press any key to continue and we'll come back in touch and you'll notice that this install whisper pulse is grayed out. That is good. That means install whisper is installed, or at least the operator hopes it is. And we can go to the whisper settings and you will also see some of these options are also enabled. Turn on use local. This will tell the operator to use the local model. And I'm going to close the readme there. You can select your preferred whisper model here. The smaller the model, 
the quicker and less VRAM it will use, but the accuracy will decrease overall. We will go over the rest of these parameters in a moment. I'm gonna select the this base whisper model specifically because I don't think I've downloaded that on my computer and let's hit launch server. Once you hit launch server, you'll see the model starts to download and then it'll say processing audio with VAD. You will also want to set this input, which you can see you're gonna have different options than me, but since I'm just configuring this for the first time, you can set that to your desired input and you can see now that we have the transcription coming in, great. Now let's go over the rest of these whisper settings. We already took a look at the model. We also have a bunch of language options. It is important if you're choosing a non-English language that you don't choose one of these .en models as those are English only. The context in WordBank allows you to specify how the model spells certain words or phrases. For example, if you're a little annoyed at how the model spells touch designer, like what is that? Let's go and shut down the server and you can type in here touch designer with one word and a capital D. And if you hit launch server again, Python window will open in the background and you will now see that touch designer is spelled correctly. That's great. Translate is something that is built into the fast whisper repo. It is a bit finicky, but I have had a little bit of luck with it. You can turn that on and launch the server to see how that works. VAD is voice activity detection. This is for the local model only, and it sets a threshold for when it will try and transcribe the audio going in. This is handy to avoid certain words that the model consistently detects in background noise, like thank you. Keep server alive will do exactly what it says it will do, and I might remove this in the future, but if the server gets closed for whatever reason, it will relaunch the server. You can also transcribe files locally. If you link the file through this file parameter and hit this transcribe file pulse, it is important to know that the this entire transcription will come in the same way that the live transcription comes in into the operator within these sessions. So you don't wanna be transcribing live and transcribing a file at the same time with the same operator. Just keep that in mind. And yeah, that's pretty much all for the local whisper settings. Max connection is in seconds. So currently the model will time out after two hours of connection you can toggle read only on this and change that if you would like to. Let's be done with the local whisper model for now. And I'm gonna hit shut down server and turn use local off. When use local is off, we are going to be using Assembly AI's real-time transcription streaming API. Assembly AI is a paid non-local service and it does get quite accurate and fast transcription. Depending on your computer, it should be a bit faster than running locally and it should be a bit more accurate overall. Let's go back to the setup page. You'll see that install assembly AI is still enabled. Let's pulse that. This will again show you what you are going to be installing. And it says select folder, but if there is already a value here, it will just start installing right away. Um, a little bit of a pause in the thing, and then you'll see a command window open. Let's see if I can catch it because this one is really quick and now it is done. And as install assembly AI is disabled. That one was a lot quicker, but that was mostly because we had installed some things with Whisper beforehand. And just so you know, you can install just assembly AI or just Whisper. The other thing that you need to configure for assembly AI is the actual API key. It's right up above this, just above it, you'll see that get assembly AI API key pulse. You want to hit that and it'll give you a little more information and you're going to be like, cool. Heck yeah, I already watched the tutorial. I know everything I need. You'll need to sign up or log in and then add your billing information as required by assembly API. You will find the API key in this sample code here. I will revoke this key after this video. So don't try to be fancy and copy it from the screen, but you're going to copy it and go back to touch designer and paste it in this assembly API key parameter. Once you set that value, it's going to show a pop-up letting you know that it is stored in the installation folder and it will be used for a future session. There are not too many settings to go over with assembly AI, much less than whisper, but let's just go over the rest of the things in this first page. Server active indicates if the op thinks that the transcription server is running. Server is listening shows if the server is currently transcribing and then listen and stream is a control that toggles transcription on or off. There's also this idea of a session and chunk. The session can be considered all of the text that is currently being displayed here 
and in the dat out one, I might as well start the assembly AI server. Uh, again, use local is off and I can hit launch server because auto listen slash connect is on. It will automatically turn listen on when the server is active. And because this is my first time using assembly AI, I also want to set the input number there and we should see if I go to my server, maybe turn listen off and listen back on for now. And yes, we now see the transcription coming in. Like I was saying, the session is everything that is currently being transcribed and the chunk is kind of the last little chunk of the session. You can also see in this dat out two, there's a different breakdown for the chunks and within the session. Moving back down the rest of the parameters, launch server, we already covered. That's what launches everything. This auto listen slash connect will automatically turn listen and stream on when you launch the server once it connects. It will also, if I shut down this, as long as this is on and I turn listen slash stream on, it will launch and then start listening for you. So now pretty much everything in the operator is set. We have our last input set, so it should be good to connect instead of having to configure that on launch every time. We have also already covered this input audio device selection but it is good to say once more that assembly AI relies specifically on this list itself, whereas Whisper can use this first chop input. That is something that I should probably smooth out between the two services, but for now, that is how this is working. And finally, the last thing to cover is the session selection down here at the bottom. Typically, you can keep this all on the default as you would probably want to be looking at your last session here in the display and the out one. And the last setting to go over is this total cost, which is assembly AI only. And this roughly gives you a fairly accurate idea of the total cost that this operator has run in transcription costs. You can turn listen stream back on and start a new session. And that is pretty much all there is to go over. If you want to get fancy, you can check out the callbacks and the callback code down here. You can also check on the timing of those by turning this on and checking the text port. The partial callbacks do happen quite often and a bit differently between assembly AI and the local service. So that is something to keep note of. And yeah, I think that just about covers enough for you to get started and be ready to experiment with it in your project. Like I showed at the beginning, there is this written readme in the setup page, which you can check back on for questions or issues. For installation issues or bugs, please check the troubleshooting section of my Discord server, or you can make a new post in the troubleshooting section detailing the issues and showing screenshots. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you have any fun ideas or end up using this in your projects, I'd love to see what you come up with. Please tag me on the social medias and whatnot. This has been an operator I've been wanting to make for a while, and I ended up rebuilding it a few times, especially with the local setup, but I think it's pretty solid now and ready for others to begin building with. That is all I have for now, but you can expect a few new tools as well as tutorials in the next few weeks and months. Yeah, definitely thanks a ton to all of my Patreon supporters. I will see you all soon. Have a good one.